Look at all the people not here tonight. That's my uh, really weak David Lee Roth uh, impersonation. Um, I sh maybe I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, today, yes, I'm going to talk about Van Halen. It was probably uh, maybe, maybe just a matter of time before I got to Van Halen. A very important band in my life. I've been listening to Van Halen. One of, one of the first bands that I ever got into. I'll, I'll talk about that as I, as I go along. I'll, actually, I'll talk about it now. I did, uh, some time ago, I did a... Uh, last year, I think, a video talking about the the uh, albums that had the biggest uh, impact on my life. I'll say this word again and again: impact. And uh, Van Halen, one of their albums was on that on that list. Uh, you have to go back and watch it, or you can continue watching this one to find out which one it was. But Van Halen was one of the first bands that I ever got into. I got into uh, I, again to repeat myself. I got Kiss Alive in 1975 for Christmas. I had just turned six years old. They were the first band I ever got into. And uh, uh, the, the next bands I got into were Black Sabbath and Van Halen. So one of the very, and ACDC, all, all in that same same period was when I got into them. So a uh, very important band to me, Van Halen, but a little bit up and down as, as you'll see as I talk about this. I've had a very, I, I think like, uh, I think Van Halen as a band have, have divided me. I, I think my, my opinion of Van Halen, is of, of their whole discography, is, is probably similar to, to many people. Many bands have, have divided. I talked about this when I talked about the Black Sabbath discography. There was Ozzy and then Dio, and everybody looks at it as the Ozzy albums and the Dio albums, although there were many more Ozzy albums than Dio. And then Ian Gillen and then Glenn Hughes and... Uh, uh, Tony Martin and, and things like that. Van Halen was very, very uh, divisive w with David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar. I'm going to talk about that as I continue. Um, so, but for now, I'm going to talk about uh, the 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 first Van Halen album. I'm going to go through a discography. I'm going to tell you about my uh, my favorite songs in each album, my favorite album, uh, if you can do that. It might be a little bit loud. It looks like there's going to be a storm outside, so I, I hope I can do this in uh, relative quiet. So today I'm going to talk about Van Halen. I'm going to start with, of course, the first Van Halen album in 1978, the debut album in uh, in 1978. It was called Van Halen. That has uh, obviously gone on to 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 become con to be considered one of the the greatest debut albums ever. Th this sold. Um, this went something like 10, 10 times platinum or more in the US, the, the debut album, Van Halen in 1978, discovered by Gene Simmons. He didn't discover anything. Um, he, I, Kiss is my favorite band, but Gene Simmons, he, uh, you maybe want to know what I'm talking about. So this, this album came out in 1978. Now this is not my favorite Van Halen, Van Halen album. It's relatively, maybe not even close, at least for the David Lee Roth era of Van Halen, but this is um, on a very, very short list of what could could be considered the greatest debut albums ever. And um, th this is not my personal opinion or your personal opinion. When you talk about the greatest, it's general, generally regarded in the music community, whoever that consists of or whoever, whoever makes up that community. Um, you could say this, Van Halen in 1978, Pearl Jam 10, the, the, the Boston's debut album, I think in 1976. Um, I don't know uh, what else you could say. Not my favorite, but I do love it. This was, uh, and, and I'll say, um, before I get too much into this, I did not get into Van Halen from the start. Some of these, when I've done these discographies, I was in Metallica from the start, from the first album, Slayer. Anthrax, Motorhead, I wasn't. Kiss, I wasn't. Iron Maiden, I wasn't. And Van Halen is another one like this. So, so you're. I've talked about this in all of them. Your opinion of a band changes depending on if if you got into them from the start, or if you got into them at some point and then kind of went back, which is what I did with the Mighty Van Halen. What other, what other band can call themselves Mighty? People say I've heard people say the Mighty Saxon. I think Mighty really suits Van Halen more than anybody. So I didn't, this came out in 1978. I was eight years old when this came out. I didn't get into this year until years later. I'll talk about that later, the, the first, Van Halen, first Van Halen album that I got into. 
But everybody knows this album. If you're a rock fan or a metal fan or a music fan, you probably know this album. This album got played to death on the radio and maybe still does. I don't know. I haven't listened to the radio in many, many years. But when I lived in Toronto, um, many albums, many, many tracks. Ha! And I should say that. I've, I've, when I've gone back and uh, I'm getting sidetracked already. This is going to be a long one. We're in for a very long night. This, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, this is where I should cut. And if I had more motivation, I would cut it here. Oh yeah, many, no, what was it? Ah, I, I can't remember. What's wrong with me today? Uh, maybe I'll get back to what I was going to say. Um, this, this album, this is not what I was going to say, but I'll say now is a lot of albums, you get tired of hearing them and then people think, well, they suck. And you could say that with Metallica, the Black Album, and Pearl Jam 10. They don't suck. This album doesn't suck. This album is great. But it did get played a lot. And you you couldn't, at the time when I was a, a, a kid in the early 80s, and maybe mid-80s and late 80s, you couldn't turn on, the, on uh, like classic rock radio and not hear You Really Got Me, Running With The Devil, uh, maybe to a lesser extent, Jamie's Crying, um... What else got played on the radio? It's, it seems like they're, they're sh God, I can't even read this. Look at, look at that. That's, how, how is anybody supposed to read that? And I have good eyes. I had my eyes surgically repaired a few years ago. Um, I'm the one, Jamie's crying, Atomic Punk, uh, Ice Cream Man, on fire. Uh, well, th this was, I got a little bit tired of this album, not, not just the, the, the radio hits, but I did get a little bit tired of it, but th this album is a classic. There, there, there's a reason why, and again with Metallica, the Black Album and the other ones, why this is sold 10 or 11 or however many millions of copies this is sold in the US, there's a reason for it. Um, my, my favorite on this one is probably, ma maybe Feel Your Love Tonight, or, um, let me let me see the track. Um, Ain't talking about love is is maybe another one. Those are those are probably my two favorites. Those were not ones that got played on the radio. Maybe that's why I liked them because they uh, I didn't have a chance to get sick of them, which happens happens a lot. But th this is a great album, and this was uh, I'll talk uh, about Eddie Van Halen. He was he was maybe the first guy that was uh, I don't want to say a guitar hero because I don't play guitar, despite what you see behind me. Um, I can pick it up and I can play the chords. That's about it. Uh, these are for decoration. Sorry. And uh, he, he was the first guy that I thought, even when I was, you know, very, very young, uh, not even a teenager, but I was 11 years old when I heard Van Halen. He was the first guy that I thought, after Ace Freely, as I said, I got into Kiss in 1975. Um, Eddie Van Halen was the maybe the first, at that point, I don't know if the word guitar or the the term guitar hero existed, but man, I loved Eddie Van Halen. Even for me at the time as an 11-year-old kid, I thought, this this guy is really, really good. This He sounded better. And something something about the Van Halen albums, all, at least the David Lee Roth albums, again, dividing it into David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar, the, the, the first six Van Halen albums, they sound exactly the same, no? And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like the, this is similar with Rat, when I talk about Rat. It's like they recorded their first six albums. Uh, 1984 was a little bit different with the keyboards, which I'll talk about later, for sure. Um, but the, the the guitar, the drums, everything, the vocals, everything sounded exactly the same, I think, for those six albums. As if they went into a studio in 1978 and they recorded uh, nine or 10, the, the nine or 10 songs that made up each album of the first six with David Lee Roth. It's like they just record all those and then put them out year by year. Uh, I'm getting really, I'm getting very off, off track more than normal. But but those, uh, the first six albums, the, the Dave Lee Roth albums, I'm going to talk about that. One doesn't sound any better or any worse than the other. And again, not a, not as a, as a negative thing. Those albums all sound perfect. Eddie Van Halen, uh, I'll say it is maybe, maybe my favorite guitarist ever, Eddie Van Halen. They're not quite my favorite band. They were, they were up there, as I said, one of the early ones. Eddie Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, why can't I say the guy's name? 
was the, was the first guy that I recognized, maybe after Ace Freely, that I thought, man, this guy is a real, real, this is how music should sound to me. And just the, uh, uh, I, I guess I had heard you really got me on the radio. And those little, those things he did, those were, for me, unique to Eddie Van Halen. I don't think I knew the Kinks version at that point, maybe. But uh, Eddie Van Halen did things that, that nobody had ever done on guitar to my 10 or 11 year old ears. I was far too young to get into Jimi Hendrix. Jimmy Page, I'll, I'll maybe talk about Led Zeppelin another time. Um, Eric Clapton, I couldn't have cared less about Eric Clapton. I was a metal kid, metal guy, hard rock guy, so I didn't care about Eric, Eric Clapton. So for me, Eddie Van Halen was, and probably still is the best. So that's what I'm gonna say about the 1978 Van Halen album. Um, Feel Your Love Tonight and uh, Ain't Talking About Love are probably my two favorite tracks. Uh, Eruption, of course, is what Eddie Van Halen is known for. But um, as, as the years went on, I think I started to appreciate Eddie Van Halen more as a rhythm player rather than a lead player, although he's, he's incredible for both. So the one more time, the 1978 uh, Van Halen debut album. Not my personal favorite Van Halen album. I would maybe put it at number four, if I remember. I'll, I'll tell you each one. This is the only band for me that is very, very clear, the, the rankings of the David Lee Roth uh, era anyway. Sammy Hagger was a, a different, very different picture. So Van Halen, 1978, an all-time classic, not just a classic rock album, but a classic rock album. Fantastic. This, this, was, uh, this, was, this was new guitar for everybody. This was 1978. An amazing thing about Van Halen, as, as you'll see as I talk about, every year, at least every calendar year, they put out an album. So this was 1978. Uh, in 1979, they put, they put out their second album. This was, uh, duh, this was called Van Halen 2. I never got into this one. This was, uh, when I, by the time I got into Van Halen, which was, which was a little bit later, this album had already been out for uh, a couple of years. And so I went back and got into this. And like I said, it, it's different when you, when you do it that way rather than when you follow a band for their whole career. I, I never fully got into this one. Which I, I should, because it, it's a it's a great album. The first thing I'll say about this album is uh, "You're No Good," which is the opening song. Might be the worst, in my opinion. I'll preface this this opinion by saying, in my opinion, which should be pretty obvious. "You're No Good," the the opening track of this album, might be the the worst album opener ever. I have no idea why. Not a, a combination of the fact that it's a cover and it's just. I don't know, it's, it's not even that I don't like it, it's just why is it the first song? The first song should really, uh, you know, in, should hit you. And, and You're No Good, it, it's my least favorite song on this album, and um, amazing that's the first. So I don't know if that was why I never got into this one, but uh, th this was, again, as I said, sounds exactly the same as the 1978 album. It's like they just record everything at once and then put them out nine or ten songs at a time for six years after. Um, I keep showing it. Why do I keep showing it? I definitely can't read it. Sometimes I use the, the track listing as a reference and, and if, if, you can, uh, if you can read that, I'm probably scared of you because you're probably a robot or a cyborg or something if you've got eyes to read this. Uh, my favorite on this one, I hate to say it, I've talked about this, the, how uncool it is to say the, that the, the single from the album is your favorite song? It might be Dance the Night Away. I love Dance the Night Away. I never ever, I don't think I ever got tired of that song. I don't remember ever getting tired of it. It was on the radio a lot and I loved it. It was um, maybe a little bit, not pop, I don't like to say pop. It, it was more melodic uh, than maybe the rest of this album. Although Beautiful Girls, which is the last song in this album, is also um, maybe my second favorite. Uh, somebody Get Me a Doctor. Um, those are my three favorites for, for people who like superlatives. Uh, Dance the Night Away, Somebody Get Me a Doctor, and uh, Beautiful Girls. Those are maybe the three, my not the best songs, but my favorite songs. But this one, uh, a few songs on this one I never really, never really get into. Out of Love Again, um, DOA, although I think, man, these are really great songs. I don't know, I don't know what happened to it. Maybe the timing of when I got into Van Halen 
prevented me. Um, I, I know the songs. I, I never really learned the lyrics. I really love singing along. I'm, I'm a terrible singer, but I, I like knowing the words to songs. This album, I, I never really got into it that much, but it is, it is an incredible album. It continued with, they, he had, uh, he or they, Eddie Van Halen had uh, Spanish Fly on this, which was kind of like the acoustic version of um, Eruption, you know, just an acoustic guitar solo. And uh, this is also a very good album, but one that, uh, to be honest, I'm not that familiar with. And I'm not sure why. It's a very simple album, which uh, maybe I can talk about that now. Something, something that's really amazing about Van Halen for me as a non-musician, I, I think his, his, again, I say Eddie Van Halen's guitar was very, very complex, but their songs were very, very simple. Um, their, their songs were, you know, three minutes long mostly. Their, all their good ones were two and a half, ah, not two and a half, three, three and a half minutes long. And um, very simple, just uh, a lot of, uh, David Lee Roth is his screaming and yelling and, uh, oh yeah, you know, things like that. That's maybe more Stephen Piercy. But uh, th th their, their songs were, were very simple and something, ah, I'll talk about that maybe when I get a little bit later about the, the, the Van Halen formula, which is similar with Rat and similar with uh, Metallica, at least to the first four albums. I'll, I'll maybe get into that later. So Van Halen uh, 2, 1979, that was that one. Um, I would maybe put that out of the six Van Halen albums. I would maybe put that at number five or six. Uh, I, I would, ah, it's hard to say, maybe six because it's incomplete, but five, nah, five in terms of what I love. All right, you'll have to stay tuned to see what, what happens next. Next, 1980, again, with the calendar year. They went 78, 79, 80, Women and Children first. I'll tell you, this is uh, this might be number two for me for Van Halen. I love this album, man. This album is just fantastic. Uh, over the years, there was another one that, that I... Uh, my number one is very, very clear. Number two, this used to be number three. If you like official rankings, this maybe has climbed up to number two over the last five or ten years. Um, I, I uh, Women and Children First is, is amazing. This is a heavy metal album. Forget about uh, uh, a lot of bands at that time. They didn't like to be tagged with heavy metal. This is this is a heavy metal album. This is a heavy metal guitar album, especially um, Romeo Delight Tora Tora. This three Romeo Delight Tora Tora, which is the intro into um, Loss of Control. If it's not heavy metal, that is heavy metal guitar. Eddie, Eddie Van Halen. Is, is a heavy, back then, was a heavy metal guitarist. I know he doesn't like that, and Van Halen considered themselves a hard rock band, but uh, those those three, the, the intro, Tora Tora was really just an intro to uh, Loss of Control. It's very, very heavy. And th this album, for me, it was, I think that this was the second Van Halen album I got. I'm going to talk about that. Fair warning was the first. I went back and got this. This, this was the second one I got. So, so this was, um, I had heard And the Cradle Will Rock. I'm not sure exactly what the first Van Halen song I heard. Yeah, I don't know if it was In the Cradle Will Rock or uh, Dance the Night Away or He Really Got Me. It was one of those, one, one of those songs from each of those first three albums. But I remember hearing And the Cradle Will Rock and I thought, um, I thought this at the time when I heard Black Sabbath. I thought, that's heavy. I don't know if the, I mean the word heavy existed then. That uh, the the intro to and the Cradle Will Rock and I I don't even know what it is I don't know if it's guitar <laughs> horrible singing as if I'm not bad enough singing lyrics I'm trying to sing guitar but it was uh, it didn't sound like it sounded like guitar but it didn't it was otherworldly which is what uh, Eddie Van Halen did he made sounds that nobody had made with guitar before but in the Cradle Will Rock was. I heard that song when I was, I was 10 or 11 years old and I couldn't believe how good it was. Uh, Everybody Wants Them is my favorite song from this album, to get that out of the way. Maybe my favorite Van Halen song ever. There, there's another one that maybe I could uh, talk about that are that are among my favorites of in their whole catalog. But I think Everybody Wants Some um, might be my favorite song in their whole catalog. If anybody knows what the, uh, the first line of the second verse is, 
I see a Luku man looking for Mubi. I don't know what David Lee Roth says in that song. I mean, in that, uh, in that lyric. Uh, I don't know if it's Moonbeam. I looked it up some time ago online. I think I've probably looked it up many times over the years, but the, whatever the lyrics are online, they're not right. Because the lyrics weren't in this album. When I bought this album, um, it was just a clear plastic, like cellophane sleeve. And, um, but yeah, everybody wants some. Um, maybe my favorite Van Halen album ever. I do this a lot, confuse the word album and songs. I don't know why. My favorite Van Halen song ever might be uh, Everybody Wants Some. Fool's also very heavy. Da, 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 da. Yeah! G a little Gene Simmons there. Not me, but David Lee Roth doing Gene Simmons. Romeo Delight. Very, that's, that's heavy metal guitar, man. Tora Tora, also heavy. Loss of Control, heavy. That's a very fast up-tempo song. Uh, Loss of Control. Take Your Whiskey Home. Um, could This Be Magic? Could This Be Magic? In a Simple Rhyme. That, that's another, that one's in the vein of, I like that one too. I love In a Simple Rhyme. That's in the vein of uh, Dance the Night Away, which I said I love. That's a little bit more, not pop, but more melodic. It's got the great backing vocals. So uh, 1980, Women and Children First. Uh, my second favorite Van Halen album. This, this is... Uh, and, and this was, Van Halen had a, had a reputation of being a, like a party band, like a good time, fun party band. This album was pretty serious. As I said, it was heavier, it was darker. If Van Halen had a dark side, I think this was it. And the next one I'm gonna talk about is the same. Um, but th this didn't have the, 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 maybe the party atmosphere, the good time, beautiful girls, feel your love tonight, uh, dance the night away that the first two albums had. So, so this one was uh, a little bit heavier. I don't know if that's why I liked it or why I like it now or maybe why I've grown to like it over the last couple of years. But Women and Children First, let me show it one more time just for continuity. Women and Children First, I love this album. This is a amazing Van Halen album. I love it. Women and Children First. 1981, continuing with, continuing with the calendar year. Fair warning, I'm gonna say right off the bat, this is my favorite Van Halen album. This is one of my favorite albums ever. This is with uh, uh, Rain and Blood, Master of Puppets, um, Among the Living, Appetite for Destruction, uh, sh uh, Shout at the Devil, Paranoid, Dire of Mad Men. This is, this is up there in my top 10, whatever number you want to say. Favorite Van Halen album. This is the first one I ever bought, which I've said before. So, you know, you have... Uh, maybe some, some sentimental attachment to the first thing. You know, you always remember the first one. You, you, so maybe you, it's, it's sometimes different when you go back. I've talked about this before. But this was the first one that I bought. And I remember buying this because I bought it at, uh, I lived in Scarborough in, in Toronto, a part, of, a part of Toronto is called Scarborough where I used to live in 1981 when this album came out. And I used to listen to, um, I think it was it was 1050 Chum, and every every Friday in the Toronto Star newspaper they had the the 30 top songs. I don't know how they how they how they gathered that information. And there was a there's a song on here called "So This Is Love," and it was on there. And I think I had heard Van Halen before that, but I didn't have any of their music. I think I had heard "Dance the Night Away" and uh, "You Really Got Me" and the, and the Cradle Rock, the Cradle Rock. So I I saw that. Um, on the, on the 1050 Chum that they had a, a song called So This Is Love. And I think I thought, oh, I, I'm going to buy that Van Halen album because I love that song. So So This Is Love was the one that, that encouraged me to buy this album. Now, I guess this is... Um, now, I'll talk about it with the next album, about Van Halen's catalog. Oh, my God. Every, every song in this album could, could be a favorite. My one, maybe one of my top three Van Halen songs. Again, it, it's a little bit weak, especially in the hard rock metal world. In my, in my kind of music, people don't like singles. I, not that Unchained was a, a, it wasn't like a radio single, but it was a, there was a, a live video for it. Uh, Unchained might be my favorite song, and I'll, I'll put this down for a second. My favorite Van Halen song. It, it's hard sometimes even to pick a favorite band. And then even harder as you get, you get bigger to pick a favorite album of all time, a favorite song of all time. Imagine to pick your favorite riff of all time. Unchained, there it is. Uh, I don't know if there's anything better that I've ever heard. 
that is better for my ears as, as a guitar riff, as, as a Van Halen Unchained. Just, um, the, just I, 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 I don't play guitar, so it's hard to say what I like about it or what I love about it, but that, that uh, the, I don't know if it's like a flange effect or whatever it is, but that uh, Unchained, the, the, main, the opening riff and the main riff, is just incredible. So, so Unchained might be my favorite Van Halen song ever. Could be my favorite riff ever out of, you know, you're talking about, I love, man, Pantera, uh, Slayer, Metallica, Black Sabbath. These were bands that had riffs. Maybe Unchained, yeah? You, you can't tell me I'm wrong. There's the thunder. Um, but, but also, uh, what else? Uh, mean Street. Uh, Dirty Movies, a, a couple of songs on here, Dirty Movies and Center Swing track, the second and third track. Um, take it off, take it all off, woo! Dirty Movies is great, Center Swing. Uh, th those maybe don't, don't get a lot of love in the Van Halen world, but I love those ones. Hear About It Later is another one, there was, a, there was a, another live video for that. They did a show, I think it was in Oakland in, in 81, that some clips when I used to watch Heavy Metal Mania, Midweek Metal Mania, um, the videos in the mid-80s, I guess. They used to play those clips, Hear About It Later and um, Unchained, from Oakland in 1981. I, I don't think I ever got tired of those. Uh, Push Comes to Shove, So This Is Love. Something strange about So This Is Love, and I'm sure everybody that knows this album knows this. Why did the volume drop? The volume dropped. I, I noticed that even when I was 11 years old, when I was a stupid 11-year-old kid and didn't know anything, I, I knew, I recognized that the volume was dropping. And um, they've, I guess they've remastered it. These are, you know, this is 30 years later almost. And they've, they've uh, 40 years later, they've remastered it. And the volume drop is still there. I'm not sure why. I, but I like it. I think it's cool. That's a little bit, uh, one of the things that music doesn't have to be for. So, so this is... Uh, so this is love, volume drop. Um, man, oh man, I love this album. And I only learned many, many, many years later that the artwork was by a, if I remember correctly, by a Canadian guy. I'm Canadian, so that was that was a little extra cool thing. And also similar to uh, Women and Children First, this was this was one that was a little bit, not a little bit, I think darker. This this didn't have any of the the party atmosphere of. Feel Your Love Tonight, Dance the Night Away, Beautiful Girls, um, even in a simple rhyme. It didn't have a, this This was a heavy, serious album. I, I think most people, I think I'm not, it's nothing unique for me to say this is my favorite album. I think if you asked, uh, I mean, real Van Halen albums, people who really know Van Halen, who know all their catalog, if you ask them their, their favorite, I think, I would guess, I don't know for sure, you can tell me, most people I think would say Fair Warning is their favorite Van Halen album this is from the David Lee Roth era, era, which again is separate from the Sammy Hagar era. Um, but I, I think this maybe didn't sell as well. I read, I've got it here, just a second. Uh, I, I read this this uh, this Van Halen book. This is uh, Running With The Devil by Noel Monk, who was their, their, I don't know if he was their manager or their tour manager, their road manager. And I think he, he talked about it in this book that they, um, that, that uh, Fair Warning was a, a little bit of a dud in terms of sales compared to the first three. I don't know where that stands now. I, I maybe should have uh, should have looked that up. But according to Running with the, Running with the Devil, got to remove the G. It's not running. It's running. Um, yeah. So I, I think uh, Fair Warning was a little bit of a disappointment in sales. But I think critically, or in terms of Van Halen fans, this might be the best. It's my personal favorite. I'll say it again and again. There aren't enough words to express how much I love this album, Fair Warning, Van Halen, 1981. There you go. Now, Diver Down. This, this was, again, keeping with the calendar years. 78 was the, the first album. Van Halen 2 was 79. Women and Children first, 80. 81, Fair Warning. And 82, Diver Down. And look at that crowd. That wasn't a Van Halen crowd. I learned many years later that that was a picture from uh, Van Halen had opened for the Rolling Stones. And it was a picture from that show. But good, good move to, uh, to make them look bigger than they are. 
This, this was 1982. I think this is a, a love or hate album. I think a lot of people hate this album, which I understand why. This, this was, a, it is a weird album. Now, I, I mentioned earlier with um, Women and Children First was maybe my second favorite, that it had moved into my, the slot of the second favorite. This, this I would say was numbered, I love this album. This, this was, uh, for years, this was my second favorite Van Halen album. I, I would say maybe now over the years, the last five or ten years, it's dropped to number three, but still great. Th this is a weird, weird album. There were this was almost it was like a cover album, half half covers. I think four or five covers on this one, and and then uh, four or five new songs, and some. This is a good opportunity for me to talk about filler, Van Halen filler. I've talked I talked about this before when I talked about. Um, Black Sabbath, especially, I think I talked about it a little bit with Metallica. Um, filler, what is what is filler? I think a lot of people think that filler is just a song that they personally don't like. They're saying, "Well, I don't like uh, I don't like uh, little guitars, so that's filler." Or I don't like um, I don't know fairies wear boots, so that's filler. To me, filler is back back then, and the thunder is getting louder. Back then, filler was literally. Record companies, and I hate to say this and then I sound arrogant, like I know what I'm talking about, but record companies used to say, the album is not long enough, you gotta do this, you gotta fill it, you gotta stretch it out, you gotta fill the time. So bands would do, I guess, um, I know Paranoid is a, is a great example of good filler. The, the, the track, Paranoid, Black Sabbath, on the album Paranoid, I think that was the last song they wrote for that album. It was too short, they needed a song, so they wrote Paranoid, which is... I think that that song is uh, less than three minutes. Great example of uh, good filler. Uh, but to me, filler is just extra stuff. And Van Halen had tons of filler. And Black Sabbath did too. I think Van Halen were the kings of filler. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I would, I would take, uh, it's very different now. Bands come out with albums every two or three, year, two or three years. No, nah, three or four years maybe. Metallic every eight years. Um, I, I would take Van Halen albums were 30, maybe, I think Diver Down is their shortest album. I think it's around 31 and their longest is, uh, at least the David Lee Roth era, the classic era was 34. I, I would take that every year rather than, um, the way music is now, Old Man Alert, than, than, than having a, a 60 minute album every four years. Uh, and I've talked before about what I call, and I don't think I coined this term, I'm sure somebody else thought of this, listener fatigue. It's very easy to listen to a Van Halen album. You, all you need to commit is 32 minutes. You, you can let, everybody's got 32 minutes in their day. You don't have 65 minutes or 50 minutes or 48 minutes, but everybody's got 31, 32, 33 minutes. So the Van Halen filler, going back to the first album and covers, covers and filler. Uh, the first album they had Eruption. Now Eruption is uh, probably considered one of the greatest guitar works ever. So again, I'm not saying it's um, it's bad. It's, it's it's incredible, but it's it's just a, a short. It's a minute or a minute and a half instrumental, kind of more as anything more as an introduction to uh, You Really Got Me was the song after that. Um, and then on the second album, they, as I mentioned, they had uh, Spanish Fly, which was. To me, filler too is just a very short uh, uh, in, uh, introduction to what song came out through Spanish Fly. Was it DOA or Out of Love Again? I can't remember. Um, and then Women and Children First, also as I mentioned, Tora Tora, was really nothing more than an, than an introduction to Loss of Control. No, 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 no. That's my Loss of Control. And, but they were great, but I think when, when you, maybe back then, and I don't know, because I was 10, 11 years old, when people looked at, at, at albums, when they looked at the track listing, if they saw seven or eight songs, maybe they, maybe it turned them off, but they saw, you know, nine, they thought, oh, okay, nine, that, that's pretty good, even though a couple of them were, uh, uh, were just introductions or uh, filler. So, so I think Diver Down was, was the king of filler. So it, it opened, but I, I will say I love it. Maybe two or three. We'll say these days number three on my uh, Van Halen ranking. Um, where have all the good times gone? Also, ha, something funny. I'm going to, something I always noticed, even when I was a young kid about Van Halen. They always had a lot of punctuation in their songs. Where have all the good times gone? 
Exclamation point! Where have all the good times gone? Not a question mark, but an exclamation point. And uh, Dirty Movies was in quotation marks, and Sinner Swing, Sinner Swing also had an exclamation point. And uh, uh, what was the song on uh, the second album? That uh, Oh, Bottoms Up, I think, had the exclamation point too. So Van Halen were the kings of filler, the kings of covers, and the kings of uh, punctuation. So where have all the good times gone? I think at that point, I didn't know, that's a, that's a kink song. I, I, I'm sure I'd never heard that song at that time, but I loved it, and I didn't care if it was a cover or not. Hang em High, uh, that's an excellent song. Cathedral, there's, there's the filler. Cathedral was really just a short minute, minute and a half instrumental piece, which is basically an intro to Secrets. And I'm gonna talk about Secrets. I love Secrets. Secrets is a very, very, I hate underrated, overrated, uh, you know, all these superlatives or adjectives that people use. Adjectives. Um, Secrets is it's a song that I don't know if too many people would say that is their favorite song, and I'm not saying it's my favorite, but what a great song Secrets is. It's a, a little bit different for Van Halen, kind of a, definitely not a ballad. And I'll say too, Van Halen never had a ballad until the Red Rocker joined. Um, the, the first six classic David Lee Roth Van Halen albums, I think that's why they're so highly regarded as their rock albums. They didn't have any ballads. Uh, so so uh, Secrets wasn't, definitely wasn't a ballad, but it was a little bit, you know, kind of a quiet song. I love Secrets. It's a great song. Not my favorite, but I do like it a lot. It's one that is maybe overlooked. I, maybe that's a better word than underrated. Um, now, Secrets was sandwiched between Cathedral and Intruder. Intruder was just an introduction to Pretty Woman, although, um, man, again, Eddie Van Halen with Intruder, I don't know what he did. At, at the time, I didn't know, and I still don't know now how he made those sounds with a guitar, or maybe it wasn't a guitar, but Intruder was uh, a little bit like a, like a talk box or Peter Frampton or something and had uh, like a cat, something really weird. And then into Pretty Woman. I love Pretty Woman. When I, when I heard that song, I loved it. My, uh, my parents, I think especially my father, was a, uh, he was a big fan of Roy Orbison and 50s rock and roll. So I always heard um, Pretty Woman from my dad in my house when I was a young kid. And uh, so, so for me to hear the, the heavy metal version of Pretty Woman, I loved it. And I still love it now. I, I, I can listen to that song now, and I still think it's great. Uh, Dancing in the Street, that was probably at the time, I don't know if, I probably heard that at the time. That's a classic Motown song. I'm sure I knew that one at the time. I love it too. I think Van Halen really, uh, with these covers and all their covers, they, they I think really made them their own. I talked about that with uh, Metallica, Anthrax, and Goldfinger too, the great uh, cover bands that, that could really take a song that really wasn't their style at all and make it sound like a Van Halen song. Um, now again, going back to the filler, the third one, we had Cathedral, Intruder, Little Guitars, parenthesis, Intro, which was just another little acoustic guitar intro into the song, Little Guitars, my favorite Van Halen album ever, song, why do I keep doing that? Kevin Montavon, I'll have to talk about this with him, he, he's pointed out that I confused albums and songs, I know what the difference is. This is an album, these are the individual songs. I know what that is, but um, I misspeak sometimes. Yeah, Little Guitars is, uh, yeah, I would say maybe my favorite Van Halen song ever, Little Guitars, Everybody Wants Some, Unchained, maybe even uh, some of the other ones on Fair Warning, Hear About It Later, Mean Street, Dirty Movies, Center Swing, those those are all my favorites, but but uh, Little Guitars might be favorite. Um, Big Bad Bill of Sweet William. Now, I liked that song back then, even when I was a kid, and I liked it now. Full Bug and Happy Trails. Happy Trails is, again, more filler a cappella. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. I'm not going to sing anymore. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have even sung that much. That was embarrassing, to be honest. People, this is uh, probably the, the, the classic... The six classic David Lee Roth era Van Halen, Van Halen albums. This is very divisive, I think. I love it. Uh, a lot of people hate it because it was filler and covers. I loved it. I, I think this was a, uh, maybe like a rushed album, a hurry, an album that they had to do in a hurry to get 
their name to, or to keep their name um, on, uh, on, to keep themselves on the radio, to keep themselves on people's mind. But uh, this one, Van Halen, Diver Down, I love it, 1982, there you go, that's all you need to know. Uh, you know what's next? Now, this, this was where, uh, for me as a, a little bit of an OCD guy, this is where I lost it. Now, this was 1984. What happened in 1983? 78, the self-titled album. 79, Van Halen 2. 80, Women and Children First. 81, Fair Warning. 82, Diver Down. 83. And then there was 1984. This came out, uh, I think this came out on January 1st or 2nd or 3rd or something. 1984, so essentially 1983. It was written and recorded in 1983. This was, this was very different. Obviously, this had jump on it. And I remember very well. There, there's some things that you remember in life that are really, really stupid that you have no business remembering. And it doesn't do you any good to remember them, but you remember them. Other things are very important in life and they could cause you great distress in your life and great problems. You, uh, you forgot where you parked your car. You forgot your wife's anniversary, your wedding anniversary, something like that loud thunder and um but but what i really remember about van halen jump it was on uh i can't say what day of the week it was but i remember waking up in the morning in january and i used to have a clock radio a digital clock radio if anybody remembers not digital with the led lights but the numbers that flipped and i used to to wake up to the radio and i woke up to the radio one day and this was uh, it was probably 10 50 chum in Toronto, and I woke up to go to school. I guess it was uh, maybe the, the first day after uh, to, go, to go back after the new after the Christmas break, and uh, they said, "Here's here's the new Van Halen song. It's called Jump." I almost said Van Halen album. The new Van Halen song was called Jump, and they played it, and I couldn't have cared less that it was keyboards. I, I loved it. I thought this this is a great Van Halen song. I loved it. Um, now, it was one, of course, like many, many songs you just get so tired of. It's not one you're ever going to make a point to listen to. Paranoid, Crazy Train, Enter Sandman, Nothing Else Matters, uh, Epic by Faith No More. I don't know how many people are making an effort to listen to these songs. You hear them on the radio. But probably now, even when I hear Jump, I, I, I still at least enjoy it. I don't hate it. Rock and Roll Night, that's another one. So, so jump now again. This this was very divisive. Even when I was I was fourteen at this point, and me and I guess uh, all my metal friends and I we talked about that it was keyboards because it was very uncool at that point to use keyboards. Uh, if if you were a metal fan or a rock fan, you didn't want synthesizers. You didn't want keyboards. You wanted heavy metal. You wanted guitars. But I I loved uh, jump. Uh, but I I know a lot of people hated it. Um, Ah, and you know what I want to talk about a little bit? Alex Van Halen. Everybody talks about uh, brackets here, parenthesis from 1984. Everybody talks about, um, uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen is the greatest guitarist ever, which for me, he's, I don't care about greatest, but my maybe my favorite. And everybody talks about David Lee Roth, possibly. A lot of people would say he's the best frontman ever. I don't think anybody would say he's the best singer ever, but the, the best frontman ever. Michael Anthony, even everybody says, you know, his backing vocals and, uh, you know, nobody ever really talks about Alex Van Halen. I'm going to talk about Alex Van Halen. What a great drummer. Again, even when I was a kid, I don't, I, and I don't care about talent or, you know, how, how much skill a person has. I just like how it, how it sounds. Alex Van Halen, uh, at that point when I was listening to, uh, I guess at that point I was listening to Kiss, ACDC, Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, those were the only bands, sorry, not Led Zeppelin, uh, Van Halen were the only bands I knew at that point. Not Led Zeppelin, for sure. Um, Al Alex Van Halen was for sure my, my favorite drummer. I, I liked him better than anybody. The drums in Van Halen stood out far more than the drums stood out in Kiss or Black Sabbath or uh, ACDC. So give it up for Alex Van Halen. So, so 1984, this is, uh, and I'll put this at probably number five or six of the, the, all the Sammy Hagar albums are below that, just to, spoiler alert, skip ahead if you don't, if you don't, if that's what you're waiting for. Um, this was five or six, uh, and Van Halen 2 would be also five or six. I did, this, this was a weird album. Uh, the four, there was only, again, continuing with the, um, the filler, Van uh, 1984, was the 
synthesizer intro before jump that kind of led into jump. And then, um, so you had jump, Panama, I'll wait, and what was the other one? Um, oh, hot for teacher, of course. Those were those are the classics. Those were on the radio all the time. And then the other four were um, Top Jimmy, Drop Dead Legs, Girl Gone Bad, and House of Pain. I loved, as I said, I, I had no problem with Jump. I loved it. I did get tired of it, but I, I still do appreciate Jump. Uh, Hot for Teacher, I love. Panama is great. I don't care if you say Panama is, is overplayed. You're right, it is overplayed. It's, don't let that take away from that being a great Van Halen song. That's, that's as classic as uh, Jamie's Crying or uh, uh, Unchanged or something. Panama is great. It, the video was on all the time. It was on the radio all the time. But Panama is a fantastic. That, that's maybe the epitome of Van Halen. Reach down between my legs. Ease the seat back. That, that's, that's maybe Van Halen's uh, definitive song. Um, but uh, a favorite, it's hard to look at those songs when they're like super popular. Uh, of, of the one, Panama could be a favorite. Also another one, I love this song, Top Jimmy. Uh, Top Jimmy Cooks, Top, Top Jimmy Swings. Top Jimmy, Top Jimmy Cooks, Top Jimmy Swings. He's got the looks, ooh, Top Jimmy. He's the king. That's a, that's a great Van Halen song. The other one's Drop Dead Legs, Pretty Smile, Girl Gone Bad, House of Pain. I, I was never a huge fan of those ones. So maybe three, one filler, three songs that I was never that crazy about. And then uh, I'll Wait, I liked I'll Wait too. It was never as, as overplayed or as played as Jump, but uh, I, I did like it. So, so uh, 1984, this now kind of, what, what's uh, really amazing about uh, 1984 kind of as a bookend, their first album was like 10 or 11 or 12 times platinum in the US. Everybody follows US sales. Um, and then I guess I would have to look, I don't know, the second one, Ben Halen 2, Women and Children First, Fair Warning, Diver Down. I don't know, I guess they were all double, maybe triple platinum around there. This I think was, was uh, Diamond again. This was huge, I guess mostly thanks to, um, uh, to Jump. It was a huge song. If, if you weren't around in 1984, you have no idea how big Jump was in Canada and the US, I'm sure. And I don't know where else. So, so amazing that they, they, they had a, their first album and their sixth album. Um, not that the other albums were flops because they sold at least all multi-platinum. But this, this was a, a huge, huge album. And I, this might be my favorite Van Halen album cover. Um, I love this album cover. It's excellent. Um, yeah, so, so that's it. I'll, I'll say um a few more times. So 1984, a little bit mixed for me. Um... I like it. This this was one of my, this tour was one of my, I can't say it was a regret that I didn't see that tour, but, uh, and I haven't, I haven't talked about my concert history with Van Halen. When I, when I do these discographies, when I go through them, I, I mentioned my concert history. The reason I have at this point is because at this point I hadn't seen Van Halen live. I did end up seeing them later. I'll talk about that when I get to it. But, um, 1984, April to be exact, 1984. I remember, again, as I mentioned earlier, there's some things that you have no business remembering. They're very stupid and they don't serve any purpose in life. They don't help you. They don't make your life better. They don't give you money or girls or fame, but you remember them. April 17th, 1984, Van Halen uh, played Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. I lived in Toronto. April... 25th was my first concert, so just eight days later was Ozzy. That was my first concert ever. And I remember the Van Halen concert. I think it was the first day of uh, the Blue Jays season. The Blue Jays opened, I think, that same day. I remember buying the Toronto Sun newspaper. And Van Halen, I think, was on the front page with the Blue Jays. So again, who, who, why do I know that? I don't know, and I don't care. And I wish it could give me some of these great things I talk about, but it doesn't. And uh, Judas Priest also, April sometime in 1984 on Defenders of the Faith Tour. I wish I'd seen Van Halen. I'm not sure why I chose Van Halen. I mean, why I chose Ozzy over Van Halen. I have no idea. I don't know if Van Halen was sold out. I don't know if Ozzy, I heard about first and I bought tickets and then I was 14. And I guess my, I don't know if I paid for it or I, cause I did, I was working when I was a kid. I don't know if my parents paid for it and they would only pay for one. 
But for whatever reason, I, I didn't see Van Halen. And not that I regret seeing Ozzy, because that was, that was pretty cool, and it really put me down uh, the right path. But I didn't see Van Halen on that tour, and that was the, the last chance to see him with David Lee Roth until many years later, which was very different. But Van Halen at that point was maybe at their peak, and I, I do wish, again, I can't regret it, but I, I wish I had seen Van Halen. On April 17th, 1984, on the 1984 tour at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Uh, so yeah, 1984 is the the album is not uh, not one of my favorites, but uh, it, it's Van Halen, man. I can't say anything bad about it. Now this next one, I don't have it, but you're 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 going to imagine I'm holding um, an album that has a guy kneeling down like this, and he's uh, I guess it's Atlas, and he's got uh, the the. The Van Halen logo, a big ball hanging on his shoulders. And that album was called 5150. And unlike Jump, I'm, I'm going to get right to it. The first song on that album was the first single that was released to radio was um, Why Can't This Be Love? I hated that song. Oh, I just hated it so much. Um, and I, I don't know if it was because of, because it was Sammy Hagar. David Lee Roth was out at this point. He had released um, Crazy From The Heat. The four song EP in 85, which was disappointing to me too. Again, I was a metal kid. At that point, I was listening to, uh, you know, Iron Maiden and Motley Crue and even Metallica at that point. And uh, no, not Slayer yet. But uh, no, I guess Slayer in 85. And I, I was just disappointed that David Lee Roth, I wanted a, a metal album or a hard rock album. And David Lee Roth put out, uh, even though I loved California Girls and uh, Just a Gigolo and whatever the other songs were on uh, Crazy From The Heat. And maybe I was predisposed to, to dislike 5150 with Sammy Hagar. And um, just, I'm just thinking of something, before I get to that, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Sorry for being all over the map. I, I think maybe one of the reasons why I liked Van Halen so much and maybe why so many other people liked Van Halen so much and why they were so big, they were a huge impact band. That everybody was talking about Van Halen. I don't know if they were ever the biggest band in the world, but in terms of hard rock or metal, at that point there wasn't too much. Uh, I guess Led Zeppelin had broken up in 79 or 80 after John Bottom died. Black Sabbath was getting to the end with Ozzy. Kiss was, you know, really changing direction. When Black Sabbath was doing Technical Ecstasy and... Uh, Never Say Die in 78 and 79. Van Halen was putting out their first album and uh, Van Halen too. So it's very easy to see that the tide was really changing. Um, and then when Kiss was putting out Dynasty, Unmasked and the Elder in 79, 80 and 81, Van Halen was putting out, you know, Women and Children First and Fair Warning. So it's very easy to see why everybody was shifting. This could, maybe you could see this as a, uh, Everybody talks about the shift from hair metal to grunge, you know, that, that uh, grunge killed hair metal and, and that was when everything changed. Maybe, maybe that was kind of the same thing, that Van Halen was Pearl Jam, but 10 years earlier, that, that Kiss and, and Black Sabbath and maybe Led Zeppelin, the old guard of hard rock and heavy metal were, were in the past and Van Halen was bringing everybody into the, the hard rock or the metal era of the late 70s, early 80s. Anyway, so getting back to 5150, yeah, I hated it. Uh, it's got what it takes. I just hated it. It was so pop, I don't know. I, I and Again, it wasn't the keyboards because I love Jump. I don't know if it was Sammy Hagar, but I, I didn't like it at all. Hated it even. I, I would say that, that uh, that's one of my, one of the worst songs of a band that I was a fan of at the time, and this could go into even now, that, that had new music that I was anticipating. Uh, Why Can't This Be Love is one, one of the worst, one of the, the most, uh, one of the least regarded songs that I ever heard. Um, then when I heard the album, I did like it. I, it took me a long time to warm up to it. And there were a couple of good Van Halen songs on that one, uh, Good Enough. Uh, Get Up was, again, like, you know, up-tempo, hot for teacher or uh, lost control type song. Um, what else was on 5150? I can't even remember. Um, when It's Love? No, that was on the next one. Uh, let, me, let me check. Let me check my phone here. 
I have to go to to check the track listing. Let me see. Um, sorry for the delay. This is when I should cut, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, here we go. 5150 track listing. And 5150, of course, was the California penal code for, for somebody who was mentally insane, I think, and it was Eddie Van Halen's uh, home studio. Uh, dreams, ah, dreams, ah, Summer Nights, that was another good one. Yeah, so good enough, get up, Summer Nights. The first half of this album, I guess, was pretty good, although Why Can't This Be Love sucks. Dreams was good, even though it was also a very keyboard-heavy song. That song was okay. Um, and then the second half of this album, I never really cared about. Best of Both Worlds, that, that, was, that was pretty good. Love Walks In, another garbage song. Love Walks In. I didn't want Van Halen ballads. I wanted, uh, I wanted Everybody Wants Some. I wanted Unchained and, uh, uh, uh what else? Uh, Somebody Get Me a Doctor. I didn't want Love Walks In and I didn't want Why Can't This Be Love. Uh, and then, yeah, 5150 Inside. Nah. This album was, was very, very polarizing. And I think probably more than any other band, maybe Black Sabbath, I talked about this with um, Dio versus Ozzy, that people were very, very divided. But I think Sammy Hagar, maybe more than any band, Sammy Hagar divided everybody. Some, some people liked him better. Um, some people just hated Sammy Hagar. I was, I guess, one of the rare people that was kind of in the middle, but I clearly was a, a David Lee Roth guy, for sure. So, so 5150, uh, a real mix for me. That was 1986. This was 86. This is when I was listening to Slayer. The, maybe the greatest album ever to ever be recorded was Rain and Blood came out in 1986. And um, what else was around there? I was, you know, Master, Master of Puppets was out in 86. And uh, Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time. Those are some of my favorite albums ever. Motorhead, uh, Orgasmatron was 86. So it was for Van Halen to, to produce, uh, to put out 5150 was a colossal disappointment for me. So uh, there, that's what I have to say about 5150. My friend uh, Jason McKittrick in high school, he's a huge 5150 fan. And I, I, eh, I wasn't a huge, I, it, it did grow on me. Um, all right, so next I'm gonna move on to OU812. What a stupid album. Van Halen had a run of for whatever this is worth, horrible album titles. 5150 sucked. OU812 was even worse, and they, they continued to get worse after that. Um, but uh, OU812 came out in 1988. Now Van Halen was two years in between albums. 84, uh, 86 was 5150, and now 88 was uh, OU812. I guess the thing that, that's memorable for me about this was, as I mentioned, I'd never seen Van Halen. I did finally see them in 1988. With Sammy Hagar, I saw David Lee Roth, I think also in 88. So I saw David Lee Roth so I saw Sammy Hagar with Van Halen, but I never saw the real good classic Van Halen, um, David Lee Roth, which I, I do, I can't say I regret, but I that's one of my biggest concert wishes that I could go back and see Van Halen in, the, in, the, in their prime with David Lee Roth. So OU812, yeah, I saw them in Buffalo, New York. In June 1988, they did the uh, Monsters, Monsters of Rock tour. Not the Monsters. There was, there was Eddie Van Halen. There's no Eddie Monster. So they did uh, the Monsters of Rock tour. It was Van Halen, Scorpions, in descending order. Van Halen, Scorpions, Dawkin, unbelievable, Metallica, and Kingdom Come. I was already a huge Metallica fan at that point for five years. I got into Metallica in 1983. At the time and in retrospect, Metallica blew everybody away, especially Dokken, poor Dokken, that they had to follow Metallica. So I, I did see Metallica, I did see Van Halen at Rich Stadium, which I'd been to, uh, or I went to many Bills games there. It was cool seeing them in a, in a big stadium, and uh, it was cool seeing Van Halen, but after seeing all the other bands, and Van Halen came on late, and it was Sammy Hagar, it was, it was a little bit underwhelming to see Van Halen in 1988. I think OU812 was not... Let me go back to the notes about this and uh, check the uh, the track listing. The first song, what was the first single from that album? Um, uh, 
Was it mine all mine when it's love? I remember a lot of these songs. All right, the tracks that sing mine all mine. No, it definitely wasn't that. When it's love, AFU, Cabo Wabo, no. Um, source of Infection, Feels So Good, Finish What You Started. I can't remember what the first song, the first single on that one was. Don't know. But uh, yeah, this, this album is, I would say, if you want to just rewind and go back for what I said about 5150, uh, I'll say pretty much the same thing about OU812. The album title was much worse. When It's Love. How do I know when it's love? Love walks in. Um, why can't this be love? I hated you, Van Halen, for having all these love songs. David Lee Roth didn't uh, didn't sing love songs. Van Halen, D David Lee Roth sang about banging chicks and drinking whiskey. And even though I was very young at the time, I knew what was better to hear about. Um, Feel so good was a was a good song. Very very poppy. Feel so good, so good, so good. Finish what you started. Yeah, kind of a mix. Sucker in a three-piece, and also Van Halen songs at this point were getting pretty long. I'm looking at the track listing. The shortest song here was 358. That would have been the longest song on almost any Van Halen album in the, in the first song. There, there's no need for Van Halen albums to be. Cabo Wabo, 704. Sucker in a three-piece, 552. Van Halen albums should be short and to the point. Yeah, so, so OU812, eh. You can see you can see where this is going with uh, my opinion of the. I did buy it, and I continue to buy all the Van Halen Van Halen albums except one, which I'll get to. You can probably guess what it is. Yeah, uh, Sam Sammy Hagar. He he wasn't my guy in Van Halen. In Van Halen, why do I have trouble saying the word the words Van Halen? So um, after that, what came after that? Was it? Uh, for unlawful carnal knowledge. Now they were, in addition to, to having a singer who, and I don't know how much uh, how much input Sammy Hagar had, presumably a lot, because when, when he joined, Van Halen was a totally different band than, than they were with David Lee Roth. So now they were, in addition to having a singer who was writing songs and singing songs I didn't really like, now they had three years between albums. For unlawful carnal knowledge, again, continuing with the awful song uh, album titles, I did again, Kevin Montavon. Just a stupid, stupid, and yes, I know, for unlawful carnal knowledge. I get it, I just don't care. It's not clever, it wasn't edgy, it was just stupid. Um, this one, I they lost me even more. I did buy this one. I, I was very, very, back then, I was very loyal to bands. I used to, if I bought one of your albums, I would buy all of them until you broke up. Um, and I, I, maybe, maybe I kept thinking, ah, the, the, the next one, the next Van Halen, the next Van, again, I'm having a hard time. Maybe the next Van Halen album is going to be good. But also back then you couldn't download, you couldn't make playlists. If you wanted to hear, if you liked two or three songs, you had to buy the album. Uh, so let me see for unlawful carnal knowledge. Pound Cake was the first single. That was, was that the one with the drill? Um... These song titles, I remember the song titles. Ah, Judgment Day Spanked, Run Around. I kind of remember Run Around. Pleasure Dome is six minutes and 58 seconds. Why is it Van Halen? There should be three songs in six minutes, 58 seconds. Um, right Now was a, was a big song at the time. Uh, kind of a cool video. I'll give them that. The video was cool. Top of the World, Standing on Top. Sorry for the bad singing. Yeah, th those are really the only songs I remember. Pound Cake right now on Top of the World. Probably because those were the singles and they were, I guess, on the radio a lot and the videos were played a lot. But I can't really say too much about Unlawful Carnal Knowledge other than the fact that I just didn't really care about it. The Van Halen have good, Van Halen used to have really good deep cuts. Little Guitars, uh, Secrets, uh, Loss of Control, Romeo Delight. The radio songs were good, but the, the, the deep tracks were good, but with for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge and 5150 and OU812, I just, I had really lost interest at that point. Uh, I can put this down for a minute. Next was, I think it was at this point, 
that they put out their first live album, which was pretty amazing. The live albums were kind of a big thing at that time. Scorpions and Iron Maiden had done Worldwide Live and Live After Death in 84. Of course, Kiss had done Live. Uh, Ozzy did Speak of the Devil. Van Halen, they had a great reputation as a live band, but they never did a live album. That might have been, I'm not sure why. You know, David Lee Roth, I never saw them live. He, he didn't have the best reputation as a, as a live singer. I'm not sure if that was why. But uh, strange that they chose the, the four unlawful carnal knowledge to, to put out their first live album, but they did. It was called uh, Right Here, Right Now. I did buy that album. I, ooh, I, I probably listened to it when I bought it and never listened to it again. Again, I was, I was loyal to it. If you were a band that I liked and you put a new album out, I bought it. That's why I ended up with 2,000 CDs or albums. And it was, I just remember it was, I'm not even going to look for it. It was, it was very heavy on uh, the four unlawful carnage, four unlawful carnal knowledge tracks, eight or nine, maybe songs from the album were on the live album. And I, I, I wanted to hear the David Lee Roth songs. And I guess at that point, Sammy Hagar or Van Halen was only playing three or four of them. So I, I bought right here, right now. Couldn't have cared less about it then. Couldn't care less about it now, but I did buy it. So there's that. Um, next, continuing with this trend was balance. Balance was, I cared about it. I'm going to have to go to the track, track listing for balance. Another one I just didn't care about. What was the song on balance? I can't even remember one single song. I'm going to have to look this up. Uh, I didn't, that, that was basically the end of, of, uh, Van Halen for me. Let me see the track listing here. Uh, Can't Stop Loving You. Again, all these love songs. Give me a break, Sammy Hagar. He's a great singer, but I just didn't like him in Van Halen. I don't remember any of these other ones. Uh, The Seventh Seal and then Can't Stop Loving You. Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do. Stop saying love. I don't want to hear it. Amsterdam. Big Fat Money. Strung Out. Not Enough. Aftershock. Doing Time. Baluchitherium. I'm not sure. Take Me Back and Feel. I don't know any of those songs. And this album was, as I mentioned earlier, Van Halen albums, the classic Van Halen albums, were 31 to 33, maybe 34 minutes. And this uh, balance was 53. And this was 1990, uh, 1994. Excuse me, this album came out. This is where I gave up on Van Halen. Like I said, the uh, so many things changing. The singer, the longer albums, the love songs, uh, more keyboards. They, they were maybe more than any other band Red Hot Chili Peppers, maybe if you if you compare, I mean Metallica changed, of course, and Anth- every band changes, even ACDC, despite what people say, because Black Ice didn't sound like Powerage. Um, I I just didn't like that era of Van Halen. So so Balance, yeah, was the last one I bought, and um, now the next one that came out was Van Halen Three. Now. I guess kind of a clever song title. For one, it was their third singer, and they had Van Halen 1, Van Halen 2, and now the third singer. Gary Sharon from Extreme. Oh, where do I start here? I, I was never an Extreme fan. Well, that's not true. Actually, I was I love pornography. When the first Extreme album came out in 89, I I bought it. I, I never really got into it, and I thought, ah, good, great guitar player, but I never uh, Mama Don't Want to Go to School. That song sucked. I love the guitar in it, but that song sucked. And that's still the only song I can uh, remember from the first Extreme Album. Extreme album. And then um, Pornography was their second album. I love Pornography. After that, they put out, similar with Van Halen, they put out uh, Three Sides to Every Story and uh, Waiting for the Punchline. Never got, I did buy those because I was loyal, but never got into them. So it was kind of good that Gary Sharon was joining Van Halen on the one hand because Nuno Betancourt from Extreme, he, he, there were a lot of comparisons with him and Eddie Van Halen. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was the only thing. They, they were both, I guess, hard rock bands. But 
Gary Sharon never had a chance of being accepted as the singer of Van Halen, just like Ripper Owens with Judas Priest, Blaze Bailey with Iron Maiden. When, when you're at the point where you, you have a third singer, people don't care. People, people give up. One, if you're, if you're saying uh, John Bush with Anthrax is an exception, I would kind of agree, except Neil Turbin, ah, he was their first, he was Anthrax's first singer, but he was kind of like half. He just did one album, and that album didn't, wasn't really a representation of what Anthrax would become. Uh, and John Bush was really good. John Bush is better than these other guys that I talked about. So, uh, so Gary Sharon, me, everybody else, I, I think Van Halen was a nothing man. Also, music was changing at this point. People were into Pearl Jam and uh, uh, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, uh, even Metallica was, you know, still a machine back then. So I'm going to look at this. I can't remember a single song. I don't think I bought, I think that's the only Van Halen album that I, ever, that I never bought was, uh, was Van Halen 3. Um, let me take a look, sorry, for the track listing. Poor Gary Sherman. Uh, it had the guy getting the, the cannonball in his stomach. I do remember that. The classic photo. I don't know a single song from here. Uh, New World, it says it was an intro. Without you, my God, the first song is six minutes and 30 seconds. One I Want from a Far Dirty Water Dog, Once Fire in the Hole. I remember that. I remember the title. I don't know if I remember the song. Once, they have a song called Once, it's seven minutes and 42 seconds. Josephina, Year to the Day, Primary, which is another uh, kind of a filler, or just a, it says here. Uh, Ballad or the Bullet and How Many Say I. How long was this album? This album must have been about three and a half hours long. This is like the, the uh, Once Upon a Time in America of, of music. How long was this album? 65 minutes and 22 seconds. Give me a break. That should be two. If you took the two longest Van Halen albums, the David Lee or the Roth albums, they didn't even equal 65 minutes and 22 seconds. There was a, there was a, a definite skew towards bands making their albums a little bit longer, which I, back then I didn't really like and now I don't like. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic was an exception. Uh, Prince, the the symbol album. There were there were a few exceptions that were long, but generally albums didn't need to be that long. So what what can I say about um, Van Halen three? Gary Sharon, sorry, but um, I I just didn't care, and I think most people didn't care. Then Van Halen was uh, really entered kind of purgatory. I think Sammy. I think it didn't last very long. Gary Sharon. But then maybe Sammy Hagar came back in early 2000s or something. I think they did a tour that was really, really bad. I think Eddie Van Halen was having a lot of trouble back then and they, they weren't playing very well. And then I guess Van Halen disappeared for some time. Then David Lee Roth came back. Ah, at some point they did a Greatest Hits album. I never did buy the Greatest Hits album. Um, they did two new songs with David Lee Roth in... 96 or something like that. Me Wise Magic was one. I can't remember the other. They were okay. It was really cool at the time and kind of a tease. I think everybody thought that, that David Lee Roth was going to be back and Van Halen was going to be touring with David Lee Roth, but it never happened. Uh, what was the other song? Me Wise Magic. Anyway, I never really get into those. And then um, David Lee Roth came back in 2007 or 2008 for a tour. Their first tour since 1984 together with... Van Halen with David Lee Roth. And then in 2012, they released this. This is called A Different Kind of Truth. And this is an excellent album. Um, but I, I don't know what to say about this one. This, this was, uh, I, I was very, very excited, but also uh, a little bit skeptical about David Lee Roth coming back. This, this was in 2012 when this album came out. At that point, David Lee Roth had been out of the band since 84, which is 16, 26, 28 years. Is that is my fast math correct? So, and you know, a lot changes over time and who knows what's going to happen. So this album came out and the first track that was released from this 
was called Tattoo, and it sucked. One of the one of the most disappointing um, comeback uh, songs ever. You know, when a band had been away for a long time, I just thought not that time away should automatically be equated with uh, quality, because some some really good albums have been recorded in a very short period of time. But when Tattoo came out, I thought this song sucks. After how long did I say? 16 plus 12. 28 years without David Lee Roth, I thought, what a what a disappointment. And even now, I think, and also then to make it even worse, was it was the opening track on A Different Kind of Truth. Probably going back to what I said about Van Halen 2, and opening with uh, the first song was You're No Good, which was a cover. One of, one of the, either You're No Good or Tattoo were two of the, the worst opening songs ever. And Van Halen, they're both Van Halen. And it's not even similar with You're No Good. It's not even that it's a bad song, but to, to put it as the first song, saying well, we're back with this guy, David Lee Roth, for the first time in 28 years, and the first song that we want you to, to, hear, to hear is Tattoo, sucked. What a horrible decision. And I don't know if it mattered at that point, because lead singles didn't really matter like they did in, in the 80s or maybe even in the 90s. And if, if that, such, a, such an amazing difference, I've talked about this before, the, the track listing, the sequencing, or the, you know, the, the order of what, of, that you hear them in can, good or bad, can influence how you see the whole album. If, if Tattoo had been buried as the fifth song or something like that, and something else from um, A Different Kind of Truth, something more traditionally Van Halen, had been the first, uh, the, the lead single, maybe I would have uh, been happier, but I did buy uh, A Different Kind of Truth. I was very, very happy. It was the first Van Halen album I bought since, what did I say, since right here, right now. No, yeah, since right here, right now in 96 or something like that. So it, it felt good to, to buy a Van Halen album again. And um, again, I, I've, I've talked about this before, the, the order album, come, the order that albums come out. I've, I've talked between, I've talked about the difference between, for me, Master of Puppets and Injustice for All. I go between whichever one is, is my favorite. If Injustice for All had come out before Master of Puppets, I probably would give that, the put that a little bit higher. But because Master of Puppets came out first, same with, um, I don't know, some other ones. If, if this had, had come out in the 80s, if this had come out, say, after 1984, or if this had come out in place of 1984, I would have loved it. Although it was long. This album is probably 50 or 55 minutes. This, this album was a, a really good return to form because I'm not sure if every song on this album was old, like, I mean, really old, going back to the 70s, and they, they had them in a vault, and they dug them out, and, they, and then reworked them. I can't remember what was new on here. Mm, no, nah, I'm not one of the, I'm, as much as I love music, I don't always know the, the really nerd information. But uh, yeah, th this was great. Aside from, why is Tattoo the first song? Why, stupid. Honey Baby Sweetie Doll, that, that's great. That's a, that's a kind of a dark sounding great, this is, this is a great guitar album. Chinatown, Welcome to Chinatown, good song. Blood and Fire is maybe my favorite, or Bullethead, another kind of a heavy, Van Halen's not a heavy band, but they did have uh, some heavy moments. That's the trouble with never. Sorry for my horrible singing. I'm just um, kind of going into these songs as I do. As Is, what is As Is? I think that was a good one. I think that was kind of a, a more, a, th this album was very guitar driven. No keyboards, I don't think, on this album. Save Frosty, Big River, Out of Space. This was, I think, a very good album. At the time when this came out, I used to, in 2012, I used to frequent a message board of a website that I won't even say, and it was full of just very, very negative people. Think of Blabbermouth, um, but even worse, just people that have nothing good to say. And I, I remember reading about this, be, be, I think before I heard it or before I bought it, and people were just saying, ah, they're they're washed up, they're... What a, what a horrible sign that is of a band is using songs that were 40 years old. And then when I heard it, I thought, I don't care if, if the songs are old or new. I, I, like, uh, I like this album. Now, again, going back to timing, 
you know, in, in 2012, as much as I love music and some music that's come out in the last 10 years has been some of my favorite music, it was hard for me, unfortunately, to, to view Van Halen with the same eyes as I would have in uh, 1982 or 1984 or 86 or something. So I never really got into this album, although I did like it. I, and I feel a little bit guilty that I didn't get into it. I should know all the words to this. How many, um, three, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 13 or 14 songs? That is too many. It's too much to digest, but uh, this, is, this is a very good album. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this album. This is a, a classic Van Halen album. It sounded very, very close to the first six. Um, not just in terms of music, for sure. I think um, David Lee Roth's voice was a little bit different, but music, and it, it, it did sound more modern, the, this album, but musically, this, this is an excellent Van Halen album. This, this is one I, I do think, man, I gotta go back and get into this. Uh, it, it, was, it was cool to, to hear Van Halen again in 2012. So I don't know what else to say about this. I feel like I should say more, but I really can't. Ah, so that's it for Van Halen. So there you go. I talked about Van Halen for, uh, I don't know how long this has been, because I don't have a timer in front of me. I guess it's around an hour. So I talked about Van Halen, again, uh, one more time, a very important band for me. They they did, you know, really divide people, including me, and they, they kind of lost me for a while. But th those first six Van Halen albums are uh, as good as, as any music you'll hear, and I'll, I'll fan these all out because I have them in, uh, in this presentation like this. Van Halen, whoops, I'm missing, uh, there we go. So yeah, Van Halen, every, every bit, they, every, everything, all the great things people say about them, I agree with them and I think they deserve it. They were, they were the band that maybe more than anybody defined this kind of music in the 80s, late 70s, for me, early 80s. And uh, they had their reputation as the party band, which was somewhat true. Like I said, um, Women and Children First and Fair Warning went away from that. But a very important band for me, Van Halen. I will always have a very, very... They, they remind me of 70s Kiss. Uh, a lot of the stuff that came after was maybe not so good, or 70s Black Sabbath. But classic, what is the real classic Van Halen album, is as good... That, that kind of music, is for me, is as good as music... How do I say that? That's the kind of music that, that uh, will never die for me. I love Van Halen. Old Kiss, Van Halen, Black Sabbath, uh, stuff like that. Short albums, I don't care. So that's it for Van Halen. Thanks for watching, if you did. Uh, I've got, uh, I think, four more of these to do. If you, uh, if you have anything to say, drop a comment. That's what people say, drop a comment. Smash the like button. Everybody always says smash the like button. It's not enough to just click it or tap it or uh, whatever. You, you have to smash it, which implies that you're physically hitting it again and again. But uh, thanks again for watching, and I'm going to do a couple more. See ya.